Known for being the weaker group of teams in comparison to the West, here's why the NBA's Eastern Conference is tougher than ever in 2021-22. The reigning champions are currently the number 9 seed, but Giannis and the Bucks just got Middleton back, and I think they're about to make a surge with a favorable schedule. But the top tier squads are the Nets, Bulls, Wizards, Heat, the Shocking Hornets, along with those Bucks. The Dark Horse contending East teams with legitimate cores who can make some noise include the Near East champs in 2021, the Atlanta Hawks, the Philadelphia 76ers, the New York Knicks, and the Boston Celtics. Further proving how deeply talented the conference is, you have young, near 500 teams like the Raptors, Cavaliers, and Pacers, who are capable of going on a hot streak at any point in this young season. So, who's the best among the top teams, and which Dark Horse contender should you keep an eye on? Stay tuned for all that and more. Only 22.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so help the channel reach 50k by subscribing if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Before splitting up the teams into groups of the shockingly scary squads, 2022's top East contenders, Dark Horse contenders, and young underdogs, we'll start with the two teams that made the Eastern Conference Finals this past spring. Since starting the season 4-6, and six, the Milwaukee Bucks currently have won 5 of their last 7 games, and over the next month, they have a very favorable schedule. Over that time span, the Bucks play 3 games against the bottom-feeding Orlando Magic, with also games scheduled against the conference-dwelling Houston Rockets, New Orleans Pelicans, and Detroit Pistons. With very winnable games coming up, combined with the return of Batman according to Kendrick Perkins and Chris Middleton, and the 2021 champions could easily gain a top seed before the new year hits. They lost PJ Tucker and Brent Forbes in free agency, which could have a big impact down the road, but Giannis, Middleton, and Holiday are more than capable of carrying the Bucks through the regular season, so the team could very well end up with just as much success over 82 games than they've had in years past. Trey Young starting to adjust to the non-foul flopping ways of the new NBA after the rule change. Last night, Trey ended the buzzing Hornets five-game winning streak by hitting ice-cold daggers in the biggest moments. In his last 10 games, Trey's averaging 27 and 9 on 46% shooting from the fields and 40% shooting from three-point range. He's no longer locking his arm or stopping and popping, aggravating defenders into harmless, frankly, cheap fouls, but now Trey's been forced to make his deep range shooting and passing even more dominant than they already were in his first three years. That improvement has benefited the Atlanta Hawks who started 4-9 and nine and looked like the typical Hawks of the late 2010s. But now, ATL's rattled off four straight wins, and just like the reigning champs, the team that knocked them off in the conference finals, Atlanta's bouncing back after a slow start. Now that we've got the two squads in the East Finals in 2021 out of the way, let's delve into the teams who seem to have the best chance of getting as far as the Hawks or Bucks did in 2022's playoffs next spring. Leading off with two shockingly scary squads in the Washington Wizards who just took down the heat by hitting three consecutive triples in the clutch, and the second surprising Eastern Conference team has been the Charlotte Hornets, who I made a video on a few days ago. Buzz City's, of course, fueled by the production of two rising young phenoms in LaMelo Ball and Miles Bridges. Charlotte's start early on has been surprising because, at least for me, I didn't see them being this good. Lottery pick and expected instant impact score, James Booknight's been very disappointing, but let's give the Rooks some time. Generally for Charlotte, with not only all the young talent they have, but with nice veterans next to them in Gordon Hayward, Terry Rozier, and the new acquisitions of Mason Plumley and Kelly Oubre Jr., the Hornets are going to be a top 4-6 to six seed in the East, entering the 2022 playoffs. However, maybe the most shocking team in the NBA this year has been the Washington Wizards. The Lakers can still turn it around, and I think LeBron and Westbrook will eventually get accustomed to playing next to each other. But for now, it seems like the Wizards fleeced GM Rob Palinka and won this trade with LA. Watching the Wizards this year, and it's evident they have an exceptional offensive flow with beastly offensive rebounders and finishers up front, spaced out by a multitude of proficient three-point marksmen 
who stay ready to knock down deep range bombs when you need them most. Compared to previous seasons, Contavious Caldwell Pope has been a bit off from three point range at just 36.4%, but he scored at least 11 points on 40% shooting from the field in seven of the 16 games he's played thus far. KCP's been an excellent catch and shoot guy next to Bradley Beal, and he's thriving off the extra space he's getting. KCP's shooting four spot up triples each night. He's knocking down a very solid 37% of those shots. Saving the best wizard for last, or at least the most surprising wizard for last, the athletic phenom up front in Montrez Harrell. Man's having a breakout season and is in the best shape of his life after Frank Vogel and the Lakers benched him last year. So Bradley Beal has all the help he needs this season, look out for the Wiz. The Chicago Bulls beastly trio of Lonzo Ball, DeMar DeRozan, and Zach Levine has carried the team in the absence of a crucial piece up front in Nikola Vucevic. Hopefully Vuce can return soon, but right now, Levine looks absolutely unstoppable and he looks like a freed man with all the extra shot creation next to him that he's never had anything close to in his entire seven year career coming into 2021-22. Skeptics doubted whether or not his near 30-point averages were empty stats given his team never surpassed 20-ish wins, but now the Levine haters are looking dead wrong. On one of the best teams in the East, Zach's posting around 27-6-4 averages on a near 50-40-90 shooting line. Let's give credit to GM Mark Eversley for not only acquiring the superstars next to Levine, but grabbing some legit role players around the go-to options. Don't forget about the Brooklyn Nets, man. Kyrie's absence may be a big time downer and the Nets are obviously much more dangerous with Uncle Drew running the point, but Harden's become one of the best assist guys in the league and he and Kevin Durant are still two of the greatest scorers of all time. KD's playing MVP caliber ball. It's just Steph Curry having an out of this world type year that's holding Durant back from leading the MVP race right now. Then you've got potentially the most dangerous team of anyone in the conference, the new look heat around Jimmy and Bam, featuring free agency pickups in Kyle Lowry, PJ Tucker, a developed Tyler Harrow, and along with Kyle and PJ, another free agent pickup in the injured Markeith Morris is someone you can't forget about. He may have gotten Sambor slammed by Jokic, but Markeith shot 40% from three-point range in the Lakers' title run back in the bubble. Most intimidating part about the Heat is that Jimmy Butler's playing some of the best ball of his career. He's averaging 25-5-5 on a career high by far, 54% from the field. Jimmy can manufacture contested looks at will and knock them down with ease. He looked worn down in 2021's playoffs, but he's getting to his spot seamlessly this season, so MVP Jimmy should scare other fan bases of Eastern Conference contenders. Even though they struggle to finish with their right hand, the lefty combo in the Big Apple of RJ Barrett and Julius Randle have still found a way to combine for a solid 36 points per game for the currently number 5 seeded New York Knicks. Getting their feet wet in the postseason last spring should only make Tom Thibodeau's hard-nosed cast of solid bigs and wing players eager to get back there again and go further about half a year from now. New York made nice free agency pickups in Evan Fournier and Kemba Walker. You also can't forget about D. Rose, Mitchell Robinson, and Nerlens Noel. You can't sleep on the Boston Celtics, who have their elite defensive big man and Al Horford back on their roster, along with Dennis Schroeder and Josh Richardson, who compile the list of new players surrounding Tatum and Brown. It's been a decent 9-8 start, but here's why you should still fear the Seas. With Big Al locking up the paint, and given Horford's mobile enough to switch on to guards, that's improved Boston's defense tremendously this year. Boston's number 9 in defensive rating after being number 17 in that area in 2021. Give credit to Al, who's number 4 among all NBA players in blocks per game, and also Marcus Smart, who's second in steals per game. Jalen Brown's been missed on the defensive end, but I'm going to give credit to Robert Williams III as well for locking down the paint, leading the team in rebounding, and he's posting 1.8 blocks per game. The Celts' defense is elite again, and given the lethalness of the Tatum and Brown combo, we can't totally forget about the Seas. 
The third of three Dark Horse contenders is the Philadelphia 76ers. Ben Simmons' drama aside, and this Sixer team has performed pretty well so far this year, considering they've also been missing Joel Embiid. JoJo is the most injury-prone superstar in the game today, but he was one of the top MVP candidates last season, so it's not completely fair to judge the Sixers' potential this year until Embiid gets back. Of course, given their second round exits seemingly every season, many fans have already written off this Sixer team, but the growth of Tyrese Maxey at point guard, who can stretch it out with a three-point shot unlike Simmons, has been extremely intriguing. Maxey's extremely fast, and his management of the pace of the game plus his overall efficiency, have both been stellar this year for Philly fans to watch. Now into the young underdogs in the East. The Toronto Raptors lead the NBA in offensive rebounding percentage, and guys up front like Kem Birch, who's been the Raptors' best center this season, along with the new board man gets paid, Scotty Barnes, that's gotten shooters like Fred Van Vliet and Svi Mihailuk extra possessions. The currently injured OG Ananobi was having a solid year as the number one option, but Pascal Siakam only has a 1-5 record in the games he's played, despite dropping a 30-piece in Sacktown. I'm praying Siakam can keep it up, because Toronto's gonna need him to stay spicy without OG. Potentially the more shocking team than the Wizards, the Cleveland Cavaliers are fueled by an unorthodox tall ball lineup in the modern NBA. Darius Garland in the backcourt is averaging around 18-7, and 7, but Laurie Markkinen, Jarrett Allen, and Evan Mobley are a nice frontcourt combination who've been extremely valuable and surprisingly versatile. The Cavs should be in the playoff race all year, even without Colin Sexton for the rest of the season, who just had surgery on a torn meniscus. Last and least, before wrapping it all up, I'll put the Indiana Pacers on this list after I made this video on them, the Pacers have disappointed me so far, but Miles Turner and DeMontis Sabonis are still an all-star caliber frontcourt. The former 50-40-90 player Malcolm Brogdon has been playing well this year. I've been impressed with their breakout rookie Chris Duarte, and TJ McConnell is giving Indy good minutes off the bench as well. While the wild, wild Western Conference may offer us more title contenders, I think the East is the more deeply talented conference, and there's a good four to five contenders in the conference as well. But who's the biggest threat to make the finals in the East in your opinion? Best answer in the comments gets next video shout out. Today's shout out goes to Blythe, who says Jordan Poole's build, athleticism, confidence, and explosiveness reminds me of Jordan Clarkson, but his shooting form and the way he attacks the basket reminds me of Steph. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. This was DFlow, and I'll see you next video.